Now that we have these two reactions to work from, let's talk about reaction mechanisms. This is going to be one of the, the most important things that we learn about <laughs> this year. A reaction mechanism is a detailed description of a chemical reaction. It's not just a balanced equation. It shows us more than just the reactants and products. It shows us how the react reactants are turned into products. It uses the curved arrow notation, the notation that you learned for resonance structures, it uses curved arrows to show the movement of electrons in a reaction. So when you are asked a question along the lines of draw the mechanism or draw a mechanism for, and it'll say, you know, draw a mechanism for the reaction. That is organic chemistry speak for use curved arrows. When somebody asks you to draw a mechanism, they are specifically asking you to use curved arrows to show how a reaction takes place. So let's take a look at these reactions. What we're going to do is fill the curved arrows in to turn these reactions into mechanisms. So right now, the way they're written right now, they're just reactions. They're showing us the reactants and the products, but there's no... Um, curved arrows present showing the movement of electrons, so it's not a mechanism. The curved arrow notation is exactly the same as it is for resonance structures, meaning that we start the curved arrow where the electrons are currently located, and we draw the curved arrow to the place where the electrons are going. So we start the electrons uh, at the beginning of the curved arrow, and the curved arrow points to the electron's destination. It's really important that you know that these curved arrows are just for electrons, not for the movement of atoms, just for the movement of electrons. So what is happening in this reaction in terms of electrons? We've highlighted the electrons using yellow and green, the electrons that are involved in this particular reaction. The, we can see from the ammonia, the yellow electrons lone pair are being used to form the nitrogen-hydrogen bond, which means that those electrons are actually reaching out and grabbing the hydrogen atom from the water molecule. That's one of the curved arrows for this reaction. Again, we're showing the lone pair of electrons. It is actually reaching itself out and attaching itself to the hydrogen and forming that nitrogen-hydrogen bond. What else do we have going on? We have the green bonding electrons between the oxygen and the hydrogen that are being turned into a lone pair on the oxygen. So in that situation, what's happening is the bond itself is breaking and relocating as a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom. When we're drawing the curved arrows in a reaction mechanism, we the only rule that we have is that the arrow has to have an arc to it. So in terms of how do I orient this arrow? Do I draw it the way that I did here? Could I draw it this way instead? It really doesn't make a difference. You just have to curve it. It has to start at the lone pair and end at the hydrogen. This arrow is a little bit harder to squeeze in because it, it has a smaller space um, to go. And I, the way that I've ended up drawing it, I'm pointing that curved arrow at one of the lone pairs on the oxygen, which is fine. It's not going to the lone pair, it's going to the oxygen, but there really isn't a good way to show that. Let's try this again with the next reaction. And let's take a look at, in this next reaction, what exactly is going on. So we've already highlighted the electrons that are involved, that are moving. 
in this reaction, the green electrons, which are the nitrogen-hydrogen bond, are ending up as a lone pair on the nitrogen atom. So how will we represent that? We'll start our curved arrow at the bond, because that's where they start, and we will end the curved arrow on the nitrogen because they are ending up a lone pair on the nitrogen. What about the other electrons in this reaction, the yellow lone pair of electrons on the oxygen? What's happening to those electrons? Let's look back over to our product. We see that those electrons are being used to form an oxygen-hydrogen bond. So we need to draw a curved arrow that starts at the lone pair and it reaches itself out to the hydrogen atom to represent that lone pair reaching out, grabbing the hydrogen and forming that oxygen-hydrogen bond. And this is, these are the mechanisms, the curved arrows for these two reactions.